Hey everyone, welcome to the Glow Up Girl podcast. I am Kyra Mitchell Lewis. Thank you all for joining. Hope everyone is doing well. I hope your week is going um, good. Happy Thursday to you. So, um, you know what Thursdays means. It's a new episode of the podcast. And today it's a new episode of the career series. So the last time we chatted, we talked about um, should you things you should look out for if you're considering um, transitioning from your current job. So I gave you a list of, actually the list was so big. Um, there was such good, good nuggets that I took that episode and we had a part one and a part two. So let's just look at the final um, signs that you should look out for um, from part two of that series. Uh, number one was you are finding ethical misalignment, aka somebody's doing something shady and it doesn't work well with your values. Number two, your overall health is affected. Number three, you do not have any passion for what you're currently doing or the job you're doing for the people, for the company, um, all those things. Um, Number four, you don't feel empowered to share your voice, which is so key for any job right now is to give team members a channel or a venue, an opportunity to um, be able to share how you feel about what's happening around you. Number five, you often receive negative criticism. Number six, you often procrastinate. Number seven, your boss is just not so nice. It's not somebody you want to do life with. (laughs) Uh, Number eight, you notice that there's really high employee turnover. Uh, Number nine, the job just isn't good for your lifestyle. Number 10, your self-worth is compromised. And number 11, your confidence is affected. So if you did not hear part one or part two of that series, you can just, wherever you're listening or watching right now, you can just look for, should I stay or should I go um, in the career series section? All right, so let's move on to today's topic. Today, we're going to be talking about mentorship. One of the things that I really, really enjoy talking about, I love mentoring people and I also have enjoyed and still enjoy being mentored by others, um, other people who I respect and admire and look up to um, in this life. So what I want to talk about today is really like what is mentorship? What should it be? Why is it important? Why do you need it? how to find a mentor, um, you know, what you need to put into the relationship to ensure that it is beneficial because it should be beneficial to both people, not just you as a mentee because you want someone to pour into you, but your mentor should also find mutual um, a mutual benefit to this relationship. So a couple of things. Let's get started with sorry, what a mentor should be. Mentor is a seasoned professional um, who can informally guide you um, as a less less experienced person in an area. You know, most often it's going to be, you know, a lot of times it's related to career, but it could also be related to um, an entrepreneurship. So it should be someone who obviously is more seasoned than where you are. They may be someone who is at a position where you'd like to be, and they are going to be willing to give of their time to help you get to that next level. A mentor should always have the mentee's best interest in mind and really should work to tailor their mentorship style to meet that person's needs. Um, You hear a lot of times meeting someone with someone where they are today, right? And a lot of times if you're going to be mentoring someone, you just need to understand how that person likes to be communicated with, um, understand where they are currently um, in life and just sort of tailor your communication to fit where they are. And lastly, you should find an experienced mentor in your network and industry whose leadership and management values you respect. Don't want to go find someone 
who you don't respect, <laughs> you don't admire, you think that you don't, you know, you don't look up to what they've done in their career. That would make really no sense for you to do that. So personal and professional development, as we all know, it's really essential no matter what career stage you're in. I mean, there is always an opportunity um, to learn, to learn more. Like I always say, if you're not learning, why are you even here? Um, I think as we continue to evolve as people, we should continuously be learning. And guess what? A lot of times that means finding people um, in our path along our journey who can help us, who we can learn from and can help us grow. Um, I think when, you know, because as it relates to especially your professional development, having a mentor can really help you because I think a lot of times when you're not as quite as experienced in your job, a lot of times you can feel overwhelmed at the thought of navigating your career path or navigating in your industry. I mean, I know for me, I mean, there was marketing, there was so many things that could be doing in marketing, um, not really knowing like what path was going to be the best path for me. So I was able to, you know, find mentors along the way as I navigated through my career um, and see what these people were doing. Um, what what were they doing in their career? How had they gotten to that point? And, you know, sometimes when you look for mentors, you know, it doesn't, mentorships don't have to last forever. Sometimes I think they're for seasons, right? So you don't have to go into it thinking, you know, I've got to be tied to this person for life. It's great if you meet someone who mentors you and you develop a relationship, a friendship with them, and you're able to continue to stay in contact throughout your life. But you don't have to necessarily be mentored by someone forever, because at some point you're going to um, you're going to need to go to a next step. And maybe that person has taken you as far as they can take you with their mentorship, and you may need to look to a new mentor. So the first thing I think that is really important as you are looking um, to enter into mentorship is that you really need to understand what mentorship is, what it isn't, and how it can be valuable to you on your journey. Right. So mentorship, like I mentioned earlier, it is a mutually beneficial professional relationship in which someone who is experienced, the the mentor, <laughs> um, provides knowledge, expertise, and wisdom to someone who may be less experienced, aka the mentee, while also helping them. You know, they're helping you, but then they're also um honing in on their mentoring skills. So an effective mentor can guide a mentee professionally while also being able to create and maintain a friendly and supportive relationship. Um, a mentor should, like I mentioned, should always have the best interests of that mentee in mind. And they should think about them first as they come to the table with their style of mentorship. So it's not about you as a mentor finding a mentee and saying, well, I know this person needs to be communicated to this way, but I'm going to make, you know, they're going to talk to me. I'm going to mentor them in the way that I want to do it, which that's not really fair. So um, definitely anybody who is a mentor, you know, it's really important that you meet your mentee where they are, understand their communication style and what their needs are. I think anyone out there who is looking for a mentor should follow some best practices. One, have a clear goal. Define what you want out of this partnership. If it's about your career, you should define your career goals and set achievable goals. Um, you know, define like what the big goal is, right? And then some achievable tasks that help you meet that goal so that you're able to come to the mentor and say, this is what I'd like to accomplish. So also you need to take a business-like approach because getting a mentor is just not about getting someone to hang out with, you know, somebody that you like, you think is cool, but it is, you're asking of someone else's time 
and they are giving of that time. So you need to take a business like approach. So approach that mental relationship as if it's a business partnership. You know, you can be informal, you can be friendly, um, <laughs> but also keep in mind that, you know, it is someone who is giving of time. So when your mentor talks to you about what have you done to meet your goals? It's not okay to just come in and be like, well, you know, this week was really tough. So I didn't really get around to it because there's so much, but you have to think about like, if you couldn't get to the things that you said you were going to accomplish um, for your next meetup, then you need to say, you know what? I am actually going to request that we meet the next week if possible, because I actually got behind and I was not able to meet the goals. So it's just really, again, that open communication um, and just making sure that you mentor, mentee are on the same page, communicate. Okay, why do I need a mentor? You might be saying, you might not, but you might be someone listening, watching out there. You might be saying that. I think a mentor is a very valuable asset. Now, most people would say that it's valuable for younger people, younger professionals, um, younger entrepreneurs, people who are new to something. But I definitely think that mentorship works for all people at any level of their career. As you will hear me say, and I've said it already during this episode, if you're not learning, why are you even here? Um, there, there is no, there, there's no moment where we get to a place and we hit that button and it's like, we know it all. We know everything. I don't need to learn anything else. No, so not true. I mean, you're <laughs> definitely learning something every day. At least I look to learn something new every day. Um, and um, different people can teach you and help you get there. The thing that may happen like I mentioned, is that I hate to use the word age out, but I can't think of anything else right now. I mean, you may, your time may expire. Maybe that's a better way of saying it, right? Your time may expire with one mentor, but that may mean you're just ready for the next level. So if I was being mentored when I came into the world of marketing by someone Say I was a coordinator and I was being mentored by someone who was a manager at the time, because ultimately as a coordinator, right, you may be thinking, how do I get to manager level, you know, or how do I get to senior manager? So I may be talking to someone who is going to be able to give me, help me build a roadmap to get to um, manager, senior manager level. And when I get to senior manager level, well, my next thoughts may be, huh, I like to be director or I like to be senior director. I'd like to be head of something. How do I get there? So you may need a totally different, you may need to then partner with somebody who is doing the job that you desire and can talk to you about what they've done to get there. So mentorship is for everyone, net net. So one, I think, if you're saying, why do I need a mentor? Mentorship offers you a different perspective. So learning from someone else who knows more about something than you do is invaluable, right? Not only in the business world, but just in life in general. Um, as I just as I just said, I mean, if you're if you have goals of getting to a certain um t- job or a job title, um you would want to talk to people who have already been able to do that and can help you get there. Uh, number two, I think mentorship is a very informal way to get valuable guidance. Because a lot of times, I think when you're working in a professional environment, a lot of times the structure isn't built into most corporate environments to provide mentorship. Some companies do have leadership programs. So I'm not saying that I said some, not all. Some companies do have leadership 
programs and they have set a structure in place to where if you come in and you say, I'm this position today, I'd like to be this in the future. You know, we partner you up with people inside of the company who are doing this. Um, but I think what's really good with mentorship and finding, you know, your own mentor or within your network or someone from a different company is that you get that outside experience um, from people who are not in your company. A lot of times, I mean, the experiences that people may use are the experiences that are theirs um, within the current situation. So I think it's really important to, you know, if your company has a leadership type program, mentor program, of course, check it out. Because if you're in that company today, but I think it's also good to have someone who is external on the outside of what you're doing every day. Because I think what you get from mentorship is Like I just said, it's informal and it's guidance from someone who has walked that walk, who is talking that talk. So, you know, you definitely want to be able to find someone who has done the things and, you know, they've done the things in other places that don't look like the place that you're currently in. All right. What qualities does a good mentor have? I think this is one of the most important things. Um, I think it's really important for you to determine what does your perfect, if you could create or link up to the perfect mentor, what would it look like? Who would they be? What, um, What qualities, characteristics would they have? So I think from a professional standpoint, some things to look at is, you know, on the most basic level, right, is looking at their experience and their growth. Um, That's really important. So again, like I said, if you're that coordinator, if you're the marketing coordinator that aspires to someday be the head of, the VP, the CMO, I mean, you're going to obviously want to find a mentor who can, um, who has accomplished that, right? Um, you want to find someone like it. I think it's better to sort of look at it in stages because if you're a coordinator and you're talking to somebody who's already like the CMO, it's great if you have that visibility and you can have those conversations. I think a lot of times like more of those like sort of informal, like coffee talks, coffee chats, um, just picking somebody's brain for like 20 minutes, those are good. But I think when you're trying to like get to what that next level might look like for you, it's important to talk to people who may be a little bit closer to it. So like I said, marketing coordinator thinking about, oh, I want to, you know, get to marketing manager, but understanding in between that, it might be marketing coordinator, assistant manager, manager. And you've got that manager who can tell you what the coordinator level, here are the things that you should do to get to the assistant manager level. Here are the things that assistant manager that catapulted me to the manager position. Um, All right. The second thing I think is, like you said, um, excellent sort of values aligned to yours. Um, I think it's really important, you know, if you find people who have values that align to yours. Also, I think um, you'd like to maybe call them like character traits. So if you're thinking about, I want to find someone who is you know, empathetic, want someone who is creative, someone who is out of the box thinker. Like you want to find people with the traits that you look to or you hope to emulate um, yourself. So finding people, finding people who are, you know, like direct, who will be honest with you um, and not like sugarcoat. I mean, that may be something that you're looking for. I know for me personally, I want people who are going to just spit it out, be tr- be truthful, even if, you know, sometimes truth doesn't, you know, feel good all the time, right? Constructive feedback. You want to be able um, to get that and you want to find somebody um, who can um, provide that to you. All right. Now, how to find a mentor, right? I mean, I think that sometimes finding a mentor can be a very organic, organic process, Um, but it's also essential to be proactive, right. And trying to set yourself up for a successful mentor, um, ship relationship. 
So number one, I think when you're looking for a mentor, determine what you want from your career. That's the first step in finding a mentor. Like again, back to the, to, you know, my earlier um, example, you know, I'm the marketing coordinator. I want to get to X. So it's really figuring out like, ultimately, yeah, you know, ultimately I think I want to be here, but you know, how do I take that in, in steps to get there? Um, so I think it's really important for you to understand what you want and you don't have to know forever, right? You don't have to like, you don't have to go in with a long-term plan of, you know, I want to be CMO tomorrow, um, you know, in, in 10 years, you can essentially say, that, you know what, what I'd like to do is move up in the marketing organization. And I'd like to understand what the opportunities are to me. And I'd like to talk about the best ways to explore those with my manager. Um, second, find a person who has your dream job. If there is someone out there, um, and I, someone told me this a long time ago, and I was fortunate enough to dig into this Um, at the time of the time during the pandemic, when we were, you know, at home and, um, everybody was working at home, um, to just have these, like, you know, meet and greets with people who were in the industry that I wanted to work in, who had jobs that were jobs that I was interested in doing, um, just to like pick their brains to talk about, um, how they got there. What does the day look like? A normal day look like for them? And I wasn't at the time looking for a mentor, but you never know what can come from that, right? If you ask somebody for 20 minutes of their time, you may see that you may hit it off with them and um, and they may be a potential mentor for you. And also too, I think when you're talking to someone, I mean, you can just, you can be honest about, you know, like if you think there's a connection there, And ask them, like, how would they, you know, feel about the potential of being, you know, a mentor to you? Um, Another thing is examining, looking at your own professional circle. You know, uh, again, LinkedIn is a great place to do that. I connect to so many people, just like I'm sure many of you do. I mean, there's so many people in my network and I'm like, wait, I always feel like there's somebody in there that does something um, that might come up. Um, as a need, especially like at work when I'm looking for like potential like partners for a project or something, I'm like, oh, I think somebody reached out to me about this. But I think the same can be said for networking. Like, look at all the people in your network. Um, you know, in um online and offline, right? Um, if you've gone to any networking um functions or learning conferences, learning and development, just take a look at the people who you may interact with and there may be some opportunities um, there. And lastly, look for people who understand your role in industry. Um, it's it's great to um, you know find people who have the dream jobs, but I think also too, if you have people who may be in your industry, but they don't work, they don't have to necessarily work in your company, but they're in an industry similar to yours, they definitely will probably understand um, more of like what you're going through and um, what you might be looking for and the type of knowledge and information that you will need to have like poured into you as you um, move throughout your career. Okay, so say you found your mentor, you've got your mentor, you're ready to go. How do you build like a successful relationship with your mentor? So one, set regular check-in times. You know, once you've met with someone, met once you all have agreed that, um, yes, I'm going to mentor you, Make sure that you set check-ins and make sure that you are respectful of that time. Because again, mentor mentor and mentee relationships is something that someone is doing because they have taken an interest in seeing you grow and they're interested in helping you grow. So it's really important that you make sure that you're respectful of that time um, that they are um, pouring into you. Another thing would be save critical communication for um, your touch bases. 
Um, I would definitely say like, uh, I know a lot of like my coach and I, we use um, Voxer. Um, I know you might use like WhatsApp. You might uh, text your, um, you might text your mentor. Um, You might reach out to them, might talk to them on social media or LinkedIn or something. Um, Just, you know, you don't have to, because I think what a lot of times is that sometimes when you have problems or issues that you need help with. Sometimes those things can be heavy. And I think it's really important to think about what your mentor mentor might be going through themselves. Like they still have a job as well. So they may, you might text them and say, oh my God, like this happened today. Uh, you know, and just dump a whole lot on them that maybe they're like, oh my gosh, I'm in a meeting. I've got this big project that I'm working on today, but I really want to help Kyra. But, oh, what do I do? So I think you just want to be mindful of that. Now, if you have the type of relationship where you've communicated and your mentor has said to you, you know what, Kyra, it's cool. You can text me throughout the day. You can send me voice messages. It's all good. When I just know that when I have a break, I'll get back to you. Now, if you have that communication and you've cleared that, then, hey, you don't have to say that. I know with my coach, you know, we have like Voxer, we talk, we, you know, I can send her messages, I can send her voice messages. I mean, even though, yes, it is a commitment where I'm making an investment in myself. So it's a part of what, um, you know, I've contracted in our like um, partnership, but I still am mindful of it that, you know, well, she's coaching other people all throughout the day. So, you know, I mean, if they're, you know, I look at the calendar and I go, oh, when do I have an upcoming appointment? And a lot of times I just write down the things that I might want to talk about with her um, that had come to me. Because, you know, if nothing's on fire, then we can wait. I can wait. It can hold. So just making sure you, you know, set regular follow-up times. Um, I would say, I know I said saving critical communications, but it's really respecting, establishing and respecting boundaries is what I would actually call that. All right. And then also you want to make sure that you're adding value to a mentor mentee relationship. So, you know, just making sure that you are a proactive listener in your sessions. Um, you are proactively learning um, because, again, like I said, making sure that you're respectful of your mentor's time and the same for the mentor, right? Making sure that you're respectful of the mentee's time and making sure that you are actively listening and engaging when you're having a dedicated chat with them. I mean, I know we live in a world where, I mean, we're often distracted picking up our phones, um, looking at other things on the computer when you're in a Zoom. So, you know, as much as you can, if you're able to like get back out there and meet in person one-on-one, maybe go out to dinner, you know, to lunch or grab coffee. If you're able to do that, I think that is a lot easier and it helps to lessen the distractions. So just make sure that you're proactively engaged in the partnership um, when you are going to be entering into a mentor, mentee relationship. (laughs) All right. So we covered a lot today, um, but I think there were like Um, I would like to leave you with three things um, that you can really take away from all this information is as you're considering, you know, mentorship, you know, and getting a mentor one, just really understanding what mentorship is, how it works, how it can be valuable to you and um, your journey. Number two, finding someone as a mentor whose values align to yours and there's someone that you respect and admire both professionally and personally. And three, be sure that the relationship is mutually beneficial to both you as the mentee and them as the mentor. All right. (laughs) Um, I hope that you found uh, some helpful nuggets in there. Um, I think a lot of times 
we think it's really easy to find a mentor, but it's not always easy because it's just like finding a coach or finding a therapist or finding any service base, um, anything where someone is, it's like a service, um, right? You want to find someone who deals with your personality, someone who gets you, someone who understands you. So I think it's definitely important to maybe put out some fillers. You know, if you, if you take the LinkedIn route, you know, put out some fillers, talk to, talk to about five to 10 people. I mean, figure out who, you know, aligns best with your values and where you want to head and whose personality meshes best with yours. So you have that time and you have that right because it's you that's being mentored and you want to make sure that you find someone who you get excited to talk talk to, someone you get excited to learn from and you know someone who also not only can they pour into you but you can pour into them as well. All right. So that is that is it for today. But before I leave you, remember, you can head over to glowupgirl.com and you can access previous podcast episodes, resources, and so much more. Um, you can also take our career quiz. It's called, Is It Time for a Career Change? Even if you're afraid to take the leap. It's a quiz. It's a fun quiz. And I designed this quiz to help you determine one of three things. One, I am happy, I am thriving, I'm finding purpose, and now I'm just ready to elevate to that next level. Two, mm, now that I've taken this quiz, not really sure. I mean, thought I was cool. It might be cool for a little while longer, but I don't know if this is the thing that I'm supposed to do, nor do I know if I want to elevate here. And three, nope, it is, this is not it. (laughs) Nope, sis, time to move on. Gotta find something else because joy does not live here. And you talk about Sunday, you got the Sunday scaries, the Monday night blues, you got every day of the week, you've got something that you could pin um, some type of like, you know, reason why you don't want to go to that job. And uh, after you take that quiz, if you are someone who's looking for some guidance along your career journey, I am more than willing to help you. I'm ready to help you. I'm ready to chat with you. I'm ready to discuss how I can help you um, either elevate in your career or to help you um, figure out what a good transition plan looks like and what should be next for you. Because it is most important that you live in a space every day that helps you to, you know, not only celebrate your strengths, discover strengths, but also is a career that you love and want to come to, whether you're coming from upstairs and sitting in your office at home or you're driving to an office or wherever it may be on site, wherever. Um, But it's important to find something that we want to do and love every day. Also, if you have any thoughts on topics or anything you'd like for me to talk about, you can send me an email at hello at glowupgirl. Dot com. And you can also check out um, our interview episodes um, that happen bi-weekly between these episodes. So head on over there, it, wherever you're listening today, you can just flip through the catalog and you can listen to some pretty awesome guests that I have the pleasure of interviewing um, myself. So I'll see you all next week. Thank you all for joining. And until then, stay focused fab and glow up. Take care, everyone.